Live from San Jose, in the heart of Silicon Valley, it's theCUBE, covering AWS Summit 2016. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We are in Santa Clara Convention Center at AWS Summit Santa Clara 2016. The AWS summits are all around the country. They've been in Chicago, Washington DC, New York, and all over the globe. It's really a, kind of a smaller regional event that they take the AWS show out. And really a big part of that is the ecosystem to meet people in all these different areas before the granddaddy of them all, AWS reInvent, which is later in the fall, 20 some odd thousand. Get registered now, they will sell out, I promise. So we're excited for our next segment. Uh, joined by Lisa Martin, good to see you again, Lisa. Good to see you, Jeff. Um, by Fangu, technical marketing engineer from Cisco. Welcome. Thank you, thank you for having me here. So people might think, hmm, Cisco, what is Cisco doing at an Amazon AWS show? Because we think of Cisco as, as obviously infrastructure networking. Um, we think of AWS as kind of infrastructure that you can buy with a swipe of the credit card. What are the two companies doing together? Give us a little bit of the history. Yeah, of course. Yeah, today I, I, uh, we are having this booth from, uh, on the AWS Summit, and a lot of people are passing by asking the same question. <laughs> so what are we doing with the AWS? Of course, uh, so before we get into that, I would just like to give you a little background about our business unit. Absolutely. So we are an enterprise routing business unit, and our team are uh, having a product called Cloud Service uh, Router, CSR 1000V which is, uh, which has been in uh, Amazon AWS for quite a while. Um, so it is a virtualized uh, router, if you can think of that. And it have all the capabilities of routing VPN and a zone-based firewall, et cetera. So uh, right now we have seen a lot of requests from our customer, not just from Cisco pr perspective, but also from AWS. They would like to have some solution that can overcome the uh, VPC peering limitation, which they can't do the transit VPC. So we, our team, uh, from our backend engineering team from Cisco and AWS Architects Engineering, we have a true collaboration here, and we worked on this uh, transit VPC solution, and now it is available. And just to understand a little bit deeper, so does this solution sit inside my, as a customer, my kind of Amazon uh, instance and operates like a virtual router inside my AWS cloud, or is it kind of a connection back to my physical infrastructure? How do the, how do the pieces kind of fit together? Sure, of course. So uh, people come here, of course, are very familiar with the VPC solution. Uh, so it's a virtual private cloud, uh, virtual private cloud, and uh, the customers can deploy it as a virtual network. They can deploy as many as they want. But the second day, what they want is to have connection between them, right? So if it is uh, just a three VPC, it's probably easy. And uh, I, I will give you an example, like uh, we have VPC A and B and C, and you want to talk between A and B, we do a VPC peering or uh, through the uh, VGW. And uh, we want to talk between B and C, we can do the same thing, do a VPC peering. But tomorrow, I want to connect between the A and C, but I want to go it through the B, which is uh, typical transit routing requirements. And uh, AWS right now have this limitation. They can't do it, it's uh, restricted. So for, from our side, we can, from the CSR, which is a big routing, uh, have this big routing capability, we can actually uh, do this, uh, we, we deploy the CSR in B, and then we can transit from A to C through the B. This is a big deal especially when the customer have a tons of VPCs to, to connect to, right? If you have hundreds and if you want to do full mesh of the VCP here, it's of course time consuming and the management perspective is very, very tedious. So with this transit VPC, uh, first it's simple to manage, it's a one click, and uh, second, you save money and time to, to deploy this whole thing. And uh, third, it's very secure. We have the IPsec uh, inscription for the tunnels. So is the biggest business driver of this for a company speed, cost, both? Yeah, it, it's both. And back to the other question, actually, I, I think I, I was halfway. So you can have the VPC connected to each other, that's virtual, and you also, you also have this capability to, to connect to your on-prem network. And that is what we see as well, uh, a lot of use cases behind that. 
And what's the and kind of what's the business driver behind this kind of functionality? If you go one step closer to the customer, what are some of the capabilities that, that they're deploying using this that they couldn't do before? Um, I think you know, is it just more peering? Is it more kind of direct connects within you know, kind of outside the public internet, if you will? How are people using this? What does it open up to them? That makes it such a big deal. I love it. This is a big deal. <laughs> this is a big deal. Yes. First thing is connection. That's we have talked quite a lot, right? So uh, making connections between all those VPCs and to the on-prem network. That's one thing. And uh, the other big deal is it's all automated. So initially, when we have the experience, you do it uh, manually. You go into the router or go into the AWS to to connect to make these connections. However, with the Transit VPC, it's a one click. So it's very simple. Um, all the hard work is done on the back end and uh, through the uh, cloud formation, to, which boosts uh, the VPC infrastructure um, and the customer don't need to worry about. And I also have the Lambda function for orchestration, which will uh, actively looking for which spoke haven't been connected yet. And then it will do the connection. It will push the configuration into the CSR. Yeah. So. Um, another thing is about the CSR itself. It's, a, it's our router. It doesn't, uh, it, no, the functionality of it, uh, it offers not limited just to the routing and the VPN termination, but also it has other features such as zone-based firewall, which provides security. And uh, in addition to that, we have the uh, AVC uh, capability, which is the um, application visibility and control, which monitor and analyze the traffic. So you can have that capability and a feedback to your management uh, uh, por portal if you have one, then you can control what traffic you want to go through and uh, uh, yeah, manage from there. So it's a combination, not just a connection, but also other features integrated into this. So in talking about some of the big challenges that customers face from a cloud adoption perspective, we've talked a lot about that today, security, compliance, control, flexibility. Can you give us, is there any project, I know you work with customers, is there any project in particular that stands out where this capability has really been a big differentiator for that business's success? Sure. Um, so as the public cloud has been uh, becoming more and more mature, a lot of customers they put their mission critical applications into the cloud. And what they really are looking for is uh, they want to expand from their, extend from, uh, from their on-prem network seamlessly to the public cloud, right? They, they want to have the consistency, the consistency including the security, they want to have the same uh, security uh, policies across the board. And uh, they also want to have the integration simplicity. They, they, want, they don't want to change their uh, IP addressing schema uh, when they deploy right. this. And also from the user perspective, they want to have the same feel and uh, use, right? I, they don't want to learn another language to, to do that. So, uh, well, this is, the, this is a big challenge. And when we have the CSR in our public cloud, this is exactly can, can transit smoothly from the enterprise uh, on-prem network to the public cloud. Uh, and with this uh, cap more capability uh, provided by the Transit VPC, we definitely can uh, leverage this uh, infrastructure into the existing uh, customer. Uh, it's, it's interesting how the challenges kind of go back and forth between capacity, and you start to get the capacity and capability down, and now it switches kind of back over to the management, right? Now how do I manage, how do I manage all these things? So it kind of it seems to swing back and forth as to you know, kind of what's our next point of failure. Yeah, it, is, it, it has been a challenge quite, and uh, we have actually heard a lot uh, from our customers. That's where we are going, actually. How do we simplify the management, right? And AWS support this uh, cloud formation. I'll give you a quick example. For example, the, uh, uh, the HA deployment for our CSR. Right now, we have, uh, we have this capability to do HA, but it's not uh, error prone. So users, when they deploy it, it can make mistakes very easily. And when they make this mistake, they, they come to uh, Tom ask, uh, okay, I didn't deploy, the, uh, uh, the, this didn't work well, uh, but I already paid. So how do we, how do we deal with this? Can you like, uh, uh, give me some uh, uh, discount next time? Right, or, right. Uh, yeah, or just refund, help me make refund. it work, right? Yeah, they want to make, make it work. work. <laughs> so we are looking at how to make this uh, more error prone. So the user, when they deploy it, it's one single click. You don't have to go manage all of these. So we are working on the back end to simplify this. 
just answer my next question, Fan. I was going to say, what's the next big challenge that uh, that you guys are working on? But it sounds like that's definitely one of them. What are some of the, the other things that need to basically help the public cloud adoption grow? Yeah, sure. Uh, this is one of them for the simplified management. And the other, we have, when uh, we talk to customers from time to time, and uh, especially from Cisco Live, I just came back last night, that they are asking for, how do I proactively monitor our, um, our virtual machines on the, on the public cloud, our instances? And we are looking at the CloudWatch as well. Uh, and another thing is about performance. When people put uh, virtual machines in the cloud as their, um, extension of the network, they always look for how can I have more throughput on the network. And uh, we are looking at uh, different uh, image types which uh, have the network accelerators from the hardware perspective. Also, we are looking at the auto scaling, uh, which you can think of CSR as a processor. As you need more, they will just expand. And when you don't need them, they will shut down and shrink. Right, right. Yeah. Certainly, you know, uh, automatic elasticity is a huge, huge cloud benefit. So, I'd imagine it's a big priority. So, I'm going to shift gears before I let you go. We just got back from Cisco Live. You know, when, when Satya Nadella came into Microsoft, a huge kind of boost of energy and a little bit of, ch of change of, of direction. I'm, and obviously, I don't want you to speak to corporate, Cisco's corporate direction, but just the vibe at Cisco Live, just having come back there. We saw some of the stuff on social. What was the vibe? You know, kind of what's the spirit with the new leadership there? That's a good question, actually. Uh, yeah, I missed the keynotes, I have to say, because I was actually proctoring the, the lab, which... The, working we, hard. Yeah, <laughs> working very hard. So our students actually came from different uh, department, different world to come to our lab, which well, we, uh, we have them to work on those, uh, deploy CSR on the AWS, and they're very happy. So uh, from the other side, we have the digital networking architecture. Uh, that is a new big thing, um, and uh, I think Folks who are interested in, uh, to look forward to uh, where Cisco is going should definitely go to the to our website, uh, cisco.com, to look for the uh, new right. digital network architecture. Well, Fan, thanks for taking a few minutes. Welcome back to uh, California to get out of the air conditioning. It was, what, 115 in Vegas, I think, this week. It's very dry over there. <laughs> it is very dry. <laughs> yeah. Get dried up by that AC. So thanks for, uh, thanks for stopping by. Appreciate yeah, it. Thank you for the conversation. Absolutely. I'm Jeff Frick. She's Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE. We are live in Santa Clara at AWS Summit. Santa Clara will be back with our next guest after this short break. Thanks for watching.